Hello guys and gals and welcome uh, to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be going over a pair of gloves that uh, has gotten changed to 1.50. They're a pretty amazing pair of gloves if you want to set up for them. And um, they do just allow you to multiply your damage really nicely. And for that reason, let's get some multiple training dummies up here because we need them. And these are the Pain Gorgers Gauntlets. The Pain Gorgers Gauntlets um, have a bonus of 7 to 9% increased attack speed, which is really nice, especially if you're doing basics. Because uh, you want to attack as fast as possible. Uh, we also get 6 to 8% cooldown reduction, which is also really nice for basics. Because in general, with uh, basics, you don't really have a lot of spending going on. It's really cooldowns that you're interested in. Um, on top of this, we also have a lucky hit up to a 13.5 to 22.5% chance to stun for 2 seconds. Which could be useful for certain builds. Like, for instance, the Flay Barbarian build might want to add this in. Just simply because the stun is going to allow him to proc the... Um, I believe it's called the Skull Breakers aspect. It's the one where basically when you stun the monster, it'll apply some of your bleed damage directly to the target, which is really nice. Uh, on top of this, it's set up for basic skills. So it has plus four to basic skills on it, which is definitely going to be a big boon to your basic damage attacks. And um, in general, it's just going to give plus four to everything. I kind of wondering why I'm not using them on this character, which is definitely a basic skill. Maybe I just ran out of aspect slots. It looks like, it looks like that's exactly what happened. As I ran out of aspect slots, I guess I could uh, sacrifice the ring of the starless guys, for, to put this over here and then throw this in here. But uh, for the time being, let's just go ahead and put them on. So basically, how these work um, is they have a special effect, and the special effect is damaging enemies with a non-basic skill cast marks them for three seconds. When a basic skill first hits a marked target, enemies the, the basic skill damage is echoed to all marked enemies for 200% times the original damage. And um, there's a flavor text on here that says, Crafted from fragments of Duriel's carapace, wearing these gloves or being struck by them causes an agonizing sensation akin to pushing one's hands through a thousand shards of glass. Now, to make this effect work, you have to hit the targets with something other than your regular attack. Um, so they need to be marked, essentially. And not everything will mark the targets, which is unfortunate. The mark is very clear when it does happen, because it will cause this little symbol to appear above the monster's head. Um, and uh, let's see if... I think here what we can use. Let's try landslide just for the moment. So we're gonna we're gonna put landslide in the mix. I don't know why landslide has a it's supposed to be a spear cost. Um, so as you can see here, when you hit the monsters with anything that's not a basic skill, that's any skill that's not a basic skill, it will cause this little effect to appear above their head. Kind of looks like the eye of Sauron or a a wrinkly butthole. I don't really know. Um, and as long as that effect is above the monster's head, you have the ability to hit them and cause that damage to basically mirror to all the other monsters nearby. Now, the key to this particular pair of gloves seems to be in that you're using something else to mirror the damage over. Um, and uh, there's essentially nothing I can do to explain to you what works and what doesn't. Because you're going to have to go through everything and see. Like, for instance, somebody asked me one day, they were like, does Tyrael's cause the mark to appear on the targets? And so we test this. And no, Tyrael's does not cause it to appear on the targets. So you're going to have to go through basically every single one of your abilities, and you're going to have to test it. Um, like, for instance, let's check Hurricane. Does Hurricane cause it to happen? So we're going to throw Hurricane on the bar real quick. And um, when Hurricane is active, does that work? Yes, Hurricane works. So Hurricane is going to cause the monsters to be marked constantly while Hurricane is active. So a very interesting way to make this build very functional would be to keep Hurricane active 100% of the time. Which is really easy for me to do, by the way, because I can pretty much just spam Hurricane. Um, and as you can clearly see, I can get all that damage mirroring to all the targets around me in a circle. So, because I'm doing multiple basic skills, uh, which is definitely very easy for me to set up. So if you are doing a basic skill damage character, this could definitely be interesting. Now, one of the things that I have noticed, however, is that there are certain things that the Pain Gorgers does not 
mirror. Um, like for instance, it mirrors the on hit, but it doesn't mirror the effects of the skill, um, which is rather unfortunate. So in some situations, you might think that you're getting a benefit, but you're really not. Let me give you a couple examples. Flay on the Barbarian um, has a bleed effect attached to it. Um, it's how the basic skill works. When you attack with Flay, it basically has no on-hit damage. It has a little tiny bit, but it's really just about causing the target to bleed. Pain Gorgers doesn't actually mirror the bleed. It only mirrors the on-hit. And so it's actually quite poor to use these with Flay as an example. Um, however, if you have a hit that is mainly physical damage, then it works quite well. Another thing I noticed is it doesn't really copy like imbuements and things like that either, like on the rogue, if you're imbuing skills. So it's not going to apply poisons and other effects. There's also secondary um, abilities that come from basic skills. So like if you're using a very specific basic skill that has other things, like maybe it makes the monster vulnerable or it gives you like a movement speed bonus or something, it's probably not going to proc through the pain gorger's additional damage. Um, on top of this, it doesn't really, in my opinion, work very well for... Mr. Goody Two-Shoes, Mr. Goody Two-Shoes! Ginger Evil Mentor here. Why bother farming when you can go to MMOEXP.com and simply purchase your items in gold? GGM would have you farm the items, what a pathetic being. Use code GEM, Ginger Evil Mentor, for 6% off your entire purchase. And don't tell Ginger Gaming Mentor that I was here what I would consider like single target damage uh, because although you are of course tagging all the monsters and you're dishing out more damage to AoE it's not really going to help you in terms of that single target damage because it's really just echoing the damage from the initial monster to all the monsters around you in a circle which means it doesn't really help you versus bosses all that much um, it does of course give you additional basic skills which if you're using one or multiple basic skills that additional basic skill bonus could potentially pump you up um, significantly like for instance in my case i'm currently sitting at 11 11 and 9 which i actually took a couple points away from storm strike to use somewhere else but if i was using a really nice pair of paint gorgers especially if they had like a greater affix as you can see i'm at 13 15 and uh, 15 and i could you know throw some extra points in there if i need to um all this pretty much comes down to the yeah three here I'm trying to make uh, fix my character so that I'm not constantly like broken all the time. That's kind of how this, these these videos turn my characters into. <laughs> Um, however, you know, you do actually need something to cause the Eye of Sauron to appear on the targets, and you're going to have to do it all the time because it only lasts for three seconds. Whether or not these are for your specific build is going to come down to do you have something that can cause the mark to appear constantly. Um, an interesting uh, thing is that when you're using something like uh, Cataclysm, Cataclysm I think applies it as well. Let me test this really quickly. And Cataclysm obviously has a new unique item, which could be useful, which would allow you to have a 100 times multiplier while Cataclysm is active, uh, which could also be kind of interesting to use with the Pain Gorgers. So if you were using, say, this particular ring, the uh, Majolnik ring with the 100 times multiplier, and you get your Cataclysm to the point where it can be active 100% of the time, you could potentially utilize this in this build as well. Um, and let me test real quick to see if Cataclysm actually causes the eye to appear above their heads. And it does. So as you can see, you can get the eye to appear that way as well. And, and unfortunately, what it's really going to take is you're going to have to go through your character. You're going to have to play around with the abilities. You're going to have to see what works and what doesn't. Um, like, for instance, um, Cyclone Armor doesn't seem to work. Or no, Cyclone Armor did work there, okay. Um, Blood Howl? Blood Howl doesn't work. The Tyrials doesn't work. Um, Earthen Bulwark doesn't work, but I wonder if the explosion from Earthen Bulwark does. So if instead of doing the fortification, if I went over here to the explosion. The explosion works, interesting. So if you set up for the explosion on Earthen Bulwark, the explosion can mark targets for you there as well. Um, I'm kind of surprised that Blood Howl doesn't work because I thought Blood Howl did a small amount of damage as well. 
Yeah, the cyclone armor does work with it. So that's not exactly terrible. And I can reset cyclone armor with extreme proficiency, as you can see here. Um, I can pretty much keep cyclone armor up with 100% uptime. So, not exactly terrible. Um, all in all, they're definitely a very nice pair of gloves. Certainly very useful in specific basic builds, and basic builds have been really popular in these past couple seasons. Uh, whether you're doing the Bash Barb, or the Flay Barb, or the Frenzy Barb, or the uh, Claw, you know, Staff of the Crone uh, Druid, or maybe you're doing my Trilogy build with the new Shard of the Verithiel, or you're using Shard of Verithiel on one of the other classes to make a basic build, like a Heartseeker Rogue, or a... Uh, puncture rogue or and there's so many different builds that you can definitely do now with basic attacks and so the pain gorgers can definitely find their way into a lot of these basic builds to kind of enhance your aoe damage capability and that's how i would really think about these is not really so much as a single target enhancer but an aoe enhancer like are you a basic build that has mainly single target damage well this can come in handy to convert some of your single target damage into more of an aoe effect um, if you can maintain the mark of the eye of sauron on all of your, you know, the monsters around you on a regular basis, well, then you can obviously get this additional damage uh, pumping out constantly. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can potentially do it. There's a lot of different abilities that can potentially cause the Eye Mark of Sauron. And then, you know, like, it really comes down to, like, do you want it to have it active 100% of the time, or does it only need to be active some of the time? Um, there's definitely 100% ways where you can keep the mark active 100% of the time on all the monsters around you constantly. Like I showed you with the um, Hurricane, um, keeping Hurricane up 100% of the time is super easy given your particular build predicament and obviously having Hurricane up means that everything is marked around you and you're mirroring that damage to them. Um, you can also increase the size of Hurricane quite considerably as well uh, making Hurricane hit pretty much all the monsters around you, which is pretty decent and maybe i might want to include hurricane into this build could be fun to be honest with you i don't know why i'm not using pain gorgers on this build with three basics plus fours to skills on on three basics is like a massive uh, amount of plus to skills especially if i could get a greater affix one which would probably be like around plus six and then maybe greater affix roll or masterwork that uh, plus six to a higher amount i could be looking at um I don't know, eight, maybe even nine to all basics. And then since I'm using three different basic abilities, Earth Spike, Wind Shear, and Storm Strike, plus eight to all of them, or plus nine to all of them, would be a pretty hefty amount of damage. So that might actually be a really good play on my part. Hmm. Um, if you're looking at to obtain these items, um, you can get Pain Gorgers. You can farm them from specific bosses. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So if you want to get yourself a pair of Pain Gorgers, um, you can farm them from Beast in the Ice. Beast in the Ice is a pretty popular boss these days for a lot of this stuff. Uh, he drops Frost Burns. He drops the uh, really nice Fists of Fate that are dropping this season with the really high lucky hit chance. He also drops, of course, the... Um, pain quarters. So if you're trying to farm any of the really nice pairs of gloves, it's a good place to go. Uh, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals joining me for these fun little videos, even when we're just talking about the Pain Gorgers and how they function, and whether or not they might be good for your specific build. Uh, and as always, be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button on the way out the door, and uh, keep watching.